Losing and trading card games is something every single player has experienced, and Flesh and Blood is no different. Sometimes you lose because you played a line wrong, or maybe you just got unlucky. But sometimes, you lose because your opponent presented a dominated on-hit effect that you could have blocked had you not wasted your equipment earlier in the game. And so in this video, I want to dive into Flesh and Blood's equipment, going over how to categorize your armor, general advice on blocking with it, and then which pieces you should prioritize and which you should save until the very end. Because believe it or not, blocking incorrectly with your equipment is quite literally losing you more games than you'd realize. Flesh and Blood is often a game of incremental advantages where every single decision counts. Use your blocks too late and you may be forced to waste some value or use them too early and you reduce your own ability to pivot the tempo of a game later on. Simply put, using your equipment more effectively will directly lead you to winning more games. So let's break it down. In Flesh and Blood, there are five possible equipment slots. These slots are the head, which often corresponds with card economy, the chest, which frequently grants extra resources, the arms, which usually buff attacks, the legs, which typically grant extra action points, and finally, the offhand, which is usually filled with a shield dedicating to blocking or a quiver for rangers. These are then further broken down by their blocking abilities into three categories that I call non-block, breakable, and sticky. Non-block armor is the easiest to understand as you only have to worry about its ability. Cards like Heart and Cross Strap, Snap Dragon Scalers, or Time Skippers fall into this category. Using non-blocks effectively is all about knowing your own deck and play lines, which we're not gonna go into in this video. No Rune also goes into this category as while it does block arcane damage, it takes cards in the hand to do so, so I don't count it as armor blocking. Breakable armor is the next kind, and this encompasses blade break pieces like the Endall Spring Tunic or prevention effects that break like Shroud of Darkness. These are cards that, once used for blocking, will be gone forever, and so some care should be used when deciding to block with your breakable pieces. It's also important to note that you can consider Temper Armor on its final block to be in this category as it will be destroyed once it blocks for that final time. And finally, there's Sticky Armor, which is battle-worn like on Braveforge Bracers, the first block of Temper, and Guardwell, which is so far only on the Balance of Justice. These pieces can be used to block with, and they stick around after they do so, hence the name. Temper is the only one that will turn into breakable after the first block, while the other two will remain even after using up their block value. So now that we have armor broken down into categories, we can move on to how to actually block with it, starting with some general advice. The first of which, though this may sound counterproductive, is to stop blocking with your equipment. At least, when it's just generic damage. There are essentially two unofficial types of damage in Flesh and Blood, generic damage and on-hit damage. Attacks like Bear Fangs or spells like Scalding Rain are generic, meaning there's nothing else attached to it when you take that damage. On-hits, however, are far more important. Cards like Snatch, Red in the Ledger, and Aether Wildfire all have powerful effects that trigger when they hit, and so being able to block these is crucial to winning a game. And your equipment comes in clutch here, as oftentimes, these on hits come with either a breakpoint or have evasion with things like dominate or arcane damage. Unless you are at a low life total, you should never use your armor to block generic damage, instead saving it for the cards with on hits. If you're facing a hero like Azalea who can pump her arrows and give them dominate, you will need to use your equipment to stop things like Red in the Ledger from shutting down your turn. But if she's simply sending a headshot with a pump for 9 generic damage and you still have plenty of life, you should only block with cards in hand, not your equipment. There are far too many powerful on-hit effects in this game for you to waste your equipment blocks. The only time you should use equipment to block generic damage is when your life is incredibly low and you need to either stay alive or you just need to keep an extra card in hand for that final tempo push. The second piece of general advice is one that not everyone will need to hear but I've still seen it far too many times to not mention. If you are using your equipment to block an on-hit, actually make sure you're blocking that full on hit. It's one thing if your opponent plays an attack reaction, but for example, I've been playing Prism and I've had my opponents throw three pieces of armor in front of a Herald of Triumph that's coming in for seven, and then they still take damage and I still get that on hit. At that point, you might as well just take the extra four damage and save your armor for when you can actually stop the on hit effect. And the final piece of general advice is to try your best to cleanly block breakpoints. If an attack is coming in for four and you block with card in hand for three, it's usually best to use a piece that only blocks for one instead of two, as you'll just be wasting that point of value. Of course, sometimes you will have to block in effectively, but as we go through the list of which equipment to prioritize over others, just keep in mind that this is also in context of whether you need a piece that blocks for one or two, and that sometimes it is correct to waste an extra block on a piece of equipment if the on hit is dangerous enough and you 
you need your one block armor for something else. But for the most part, when it comes to blocking on hits, there is a priority to what equipment pieces you want to block with earlier and what you want to hold on for later. And while Flesh and Blood is an insanely nuanced game that is ever changing turn after turn, I've made a generalized priority list for how to choose which pieces to block with. When an on-hit that you need to block is presented, the first equipment you should be looking to use are your sticky pieces that have abilities that destroy themselves, which you might need to use earlier in the game. The best example of this is the Refraction Bolters, which is a card typically run in Dawnblade Dorinthia. Goagan is integral to this deck strategy, and sometimes you don't get access to it in your hand, and you need to use the Refraction Bolters to maintain tempo. Because you may need to use this card at any time in the game, you should try to use it before your other armor pieces, because if you don't, you may be forced to waste the block value on it if you need it. Its ability. Other cards that fall into this category are Black Deck Whisperers, Gallantry Gold, Aether Ironweave, Breaking Scales, Courage of Blade Hold, and Monstrous Veil. All of these cards have abilities that might need to be used at any point in the game, and so you want to use their block value early to avoid wasting it. The next equipment that you should be looking to use are either your other sticky pieces or those that only block damage. Cards like the Iron Rot set are the easiest to choose when to block with as they only serve that purpose. Even cards like Crater Fist and Knucklehead can be put into this category as they're usually only used for their block value. And after you use the armor that's purely meant for block, you can start to then use your sticky battle-worn armor like Braveforge Bracers and Scabskin Leathers, or temper armor like the Flamescale Furnace and Grains of Blood Spill. If you happen to have both battle-worn and temper armor at the same time though, like Warrior with the Bracers and Grains, you should always use the battle-worn first. Let's say you block with grains for two and then have to cover a breakpoint of one. In order to stop that breakpoint, you'd either have to overblock and waste one point of value on the Braveforge Bracers or give up the grains entirely since it will break after the second block. But if you use the Bracers first, you open up that one block on it and it will still stick around after using it and you still have a two block equipment to use in case you need that. This helps minimize wasted value which is crucial to winning in the tighter games of flesh and blood which you will inevitably have. And speaking of temper equipment breaking, the next category of armor you should block with is your breakable pieces in order of how relevant their abilities are for the rest of the game. The absolute best example here is Fiendal's Spring Tunic. This card generates resources throughout the game, but at some point you will likely have to block with it. You should only ever do this in the late game when you absolutely have to block with it in order to have a path to victory. And when you have two breakable pieces, let's say the Iron Song versus Anna Tunic, you have to make the decision of which is less important for the content context of the game. If Tunic has two or three counters on it and that resource would be helpful, then you probably should give up the verses first. But if you don't think there will be three more turns and you would rather sink your resources into the on-hit thread of the verses, then blocking with the Tunic is far better. Essentially, the last equipment you should ever be blocking with are your deck's most crucial pieces that you only ever want to give up as a last resort. It may take a bit of time and practice to figure out what pieces these are and in which situations, but it's important to know so that you don't mess yourself up by blocking with a crucial piece too early in the game. Some more fantastic examples of key breakable equipment pieces are the Mask of Momentum, Skullbone Cross Wraps, Vestige of Soul, Flamescale Furnace, Phantasmal Footsteps, at least when blocking a six attack, and Spellbound Creepers. All of these have integral roles within the respective decks, and so your goal should be to go as long as possible without blocking with these. Using them too early or at the wrong time could cost you the game entirely. But finally, we get to the final category of equipment, and this one is a little trickier to know when to block with. These equipment cards are those with ability that determine when you should block with them, meaning that you want to use them at varying times depending on the game state. Cards like Scowling Fleshbag, Crown of Providence, Arcanite Skullcap, Carrion Husk, Soulbound Resolve, Phantasmal Footsteps, Rampart of the Ram's Head, and Valiant Dynamo are all cards that fall under this category. For some like the Fleshbag and Crown of Providence, there are specific scenarios that you want to use them on. Scowling Fleshbag is a card that interrupts an opponent's turn, so it's best to use it when your opponent has four cards and an arsenal in order to neuter their power turn. Crown, on the other hand, is perfect as a one-time anti-command and conquer piece, although it can also be used to get rid of a dead card out of arsenal or fix an awkward hand. Arcanite Skullcap is a card that only gets its full value when you have less life than the opponent, so you want to prioritize it on turns where you're a bit behind, otherwise you might have to waste some of the block. Carrion Husk, on the other hand, gives you blood debt, meaning that you don't want to use it early. However, it does need to be used before you fall below 13 life, so you need to make sure that you use it before you fall below that point, otherwise it just gets wasted. Next, we have cards like Phantasmal Footstep and Rampart of the Ram's Head that can continuously block over the course of a game, but cost resources to do so. While not useful into every matchup, they do have the utility when paired with other things to sink resources into, or for stopping things like the Harmonized Kadachis and Teclaplasma Pistol. And similar to these is the Valiant Dynamo, which is run in pretty much every dual-wielding warrior deck. The ability to block for one almost every turn for what is basically free is very powerful, and any deck running this card will seek to block with it every turn possible, making it quite a unique piece of equipment. 
But that is it for the blocking priority of your equipment. You should first use the equipment you might need to use at any point in the game, then using your sticky armor, battle worn first, before finally giving up your crucial breakable pieces. And if you've got special use equipment like the Scowling Flesh Bag or the Valiant Dynamo, learn to identify what situations they're best to use in and then get the most value out of them. However, there is one last thing to mention before you can take off to the armory and put this new information into practice. Now that you have a better idea of how to use your own equipment, you also need to start paying attention to your opponent's armor. If you know that you want to use yours to stop breakpoints and on hits, you should expect your opponents to do the same. This means that you should adjust how you play based on how much armor your opponent has. If they have little equipment block like Azalea, you can be relatively confident that you can land your on hits. But if you're facing a Kasai who has an absolute fridge, you're going to need to force her to use up her armor before you can start getting your hits to connect. Just keep in mind how much extra block your opponents have when planning out your own turn as it will help you make better decisions on what to block with and what to keep. But that is finally it for this video. Blocking with equipment effectively is something that takes time and practice and mistakes. Because each hero in each matchup is so different, there will always be scenarios that change your decisions and sometimes you're just going to have to do the wrong thing to learn the right way to block. However, I do hope that this video helps you get the baseline to not only know what you should be blocking, but also how to categorize your equipment and decide the order in which to block with them. So the next time that you're at an armory or facing a friend, remember this information information and use it to kick some ass. And you know who else kicks ass? My lovely patrons. If you want to help me make more educational videos like this or more fun ones with Mr. Ribbits, please consider supporting me on Patreon. You'll also get a few cool things from it like becoming one of the coveted Giga Chads like Saint, Geeks First, Elixir, Vinny, Smokopotamus, John, Ty, James, Chemical, Bryant, Transient Fire, Dark Bamoria, and Big Hungry. Then we've got the Alpha Chads Thomas, Zajima, and Pavel. And finally, there's the Super Chads Bruno, Thal, Cece, Eric, Ben, and Yogba Doodles 21. Thanks again as always, and stay Chadley, my friends.